here. What's up, Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter, and Instagram followers? It's your boy No Name back at it again with another Giants update video. Been about three days since my last upload. My bad, guys. Um, my f it's fall, right? Yeah, my fall semester. <laughs> For a second there because I've been stuck in quarantine, I'm like, am I entering my spring or fall semester of college this time? It's fall. It begins this Wednesday, so you know, I've been slowly prepping, slowly shifting back to prepare for that guy right there. It starts this Wednesday, and definitely, I mentioned it in a stream before, but I guess I'm formally kind of telling you guys now. Um, I'm definitely going to be making less videos and doing less streams than I usually did over the summer and, um, you know, just in general in quarantine where I almost did a video a day. I've been banging out them things like it was nothing. So that's definitely going to take a step back because I have to shift my focus a little bit back to my studies. Um, now, I can't exactly give you guys a definitive answer on how much less it's going to be because it's going to vary. It's going to depend on the workload that I get. It's going to depend on maybe one week I get very little work and the next week I get a whole bunch dumped on me. Maybe one week I got a couple of quizzes and tests. Like, it's honestly going to vary. So, like, in my mind, I was like, maybe I'll do through do three vids a week with three streams but i'm like realistically speaking it's not gonna happen like that it's gonna be a like a a, a wavy process so to speak it's not gonna be one flat line type of thing just know that i'm not gonna disappear i'm not gonna completely disappear i mean i've been doing uh youtube now through three semesters of college so far and i'm pretty much i've, I've survived i've been doing well so i'm not gonna disappear but i am definitely gonna be hear less so to speak i um, just want to let you guys know that officially since my semester is starting on wednesday i'm gonna be taking a, just a little bit of step back so with the announcements out of the way with that finish right there let's get into what i want to talk about today now i didn't get to um kind of quote unquote review or recap the live scrimmage that the giants did uh, this past, I think it was Friday or Saturday, and at this point, it's too late to do so. I kind of gave my thoughts a little bit in the live stream last night with OGR, but what I am going to do is go over a couple of quotes by Joe Judge and even some other coaches on the Giants here about what they observed during the live scrimmage and what they think players need to improve upon and whatnot and give you my thoughts on that. The article, of course, as usual, could be found on Giants.com, so let's get right into it. Judge, who oversaw his first intra-squad scrimmage on Friday, was asked to if he assesses both an individual player's progress and how he works within his unit. Absolutely. In fact, when I go back and I watch the tape from the first scrimmage, you watch it three different times. First, you watch it schematically. Then you watch it fundamentally. Then you watch it from a personnel standpoint. As you watch it every time over and over differently, you try to pick up as much as you can and continuously write down notes. Now it's pretty interesting right here. Um, obviously, it's not like we ever had a coach that talked this much about teaching and, and really went in depth about their process of how they evaluate players and whatnot. At least to my recent memory, I don't. Obviously, Shermer didn't do it. McAdoo didn't do it. Um, as far as I know, Coughlin didn't really talk about anything like this to the media. So this is pretty interesting. And what I'm wondering is, is going over it multiple times, I'm sure that's a common practice, but is going over it multiple times with looking at these three specific things or just three different things in general, a common practice. Now that's what I'm wondering about Judge here because he's all about the fundamentals. Not only you know is that basically the basics of his teaching, but it's the basics of the Giants teaching right now because of the situation at hand where it's like all they could really learn is the fundamentals so that's something I, that popped into my mind when i initially read the quote it continues saying there were several players coming out um that we had to address some fundamental corrections today we made sure to took some time individually to walk through the techniques tomorrow we'll be out there in full speed tempo so that we can go ahead and take those same techniques and execute them again these guys are less than two weeks into playing football in 2020 so we can't take for granted that they need fundamental work on a daily basis and i completely agree with him man there's two weeks left before the season actually starts you haven't even cut the roster down from 80 guys yet you haven't selected team captains yet and you're really not sure how the team is going to fill out, how it's going to shape out. And even with the guys that are, are, you could call, established on a team, like, you know, Saquon, Dexter Lawrence, Daniel Jones, obviously, these guys still have pr probably quite a bit to improve upon technically. And with the time available, who knows how that's going to go. In fact, I'm surprised that Judge hasn't really, you know, tried to, to schedule some extra practices maybe to try and, you know, just use up as much time as they can. But he's definitely been very mindful of the fact that these players are not robots, that they're humans. Um, that's shown in the fact that he let Ryan Conley and Xavier McKinney sit out of that live scrimmage because he said, you know, th th those guys were cross-ring a lot. They um, were working harder than anybody else. You know, they did the rest more so than anybody else, which made me 
you know, question, hmm, what kind of training were they, they specifically doing? I know Xavier McKinney is cross-training in a couple positions. What about Ryan Conley, though? What was he doing that was so stressful on his body that required Judge to say, okay, take this day off from the live scrimmage? So that was definitely interesting as well. Getting back to the scrimmage, Judge said, I like the way everyone came out and competed. That definitely showed up on tape. Guys were flying around, guys were playing fast. I thought we had good communication on both sides of the ball. We had a lot of substitution situations at both sides and handled accordingly. You saw a lot of young guys step up and play faster on Friday than we had earlier in the week. You can tell they're getting more confident and comfortable within the scheme. That was definitely something that showed up right away. His comment on young guys, what came to my mind immediately, of course I saw this from several beat reporters on Twitter and whatnot. That's how I stayed updated with the um, scrimmage while I was, you know, doing other things. Guys that come to mind immediately, Javon Leak and um, Darnay Holmes. Darnay Holmes had the only interception of the day. Um, it was on Golden Tate, I believe. He kind of laid out a little bit for it. Of course, also on Daniel Jones and then Javon Leak, the young undrafted running back out of Maryland. He had the best running back day, according to these reporters, um, compared to anybody else. He really showed up and showed out. So when I'm thinking young guys, my mind kind of immediately goes to the rookies. But of course, as we all know, the Giants are just a young team in general. Literally anybody on here is a young guy. You look at Saquon and Dexter Lawrence, for example, who had a little bit, you know, Dexter Lawrence definitely kind of owned Saquon in the padded practices, you know, in the scrimmage from what we've heard. You know, he sniffed out the runs and just stopped them a couple of times. It was very effective and even stood over Saquon and what was probably a show of dominance for a couple seconds. And that's really it in terms of from what I wanted to address from Judge. Now, there is one other quote up here, but I already kind of addressed it with the fact that he's letting players rest. I'll toss it up if you guys want to read it, where he basically explains why he let these guys take the day off, you know, both for, you know, their mental health needs and their physical health needs. Now, next guy I want to get to is the outside linebackers coach, Brett Bielma, and his thoughts on Marcus Golden. If you guys remember, when I covered Marcus Golden's press conference, and I went over a couple quotes and whatnot, the one thing I took away from Marcus Golden and what he said to the press was that this guy is just hungry, he's ready to get out and play, and he mentally, at least, is paused, paused, why did I say paused, is poised <laughs> for a sort of just great season mentally this guy is ready to get out there he's ready to wreck games he's ready to wreck quarterbacks he's ready to prove to both himself and the nfl that he is you know one of the better pass rushers in the league that he is the number one pass rusher on the giants because he feels and, I, and rightfully so he feels a little bit slighted a little bit disrespected that nobody went after him in free agency just off of that press conference alone i just got the feeling that he's gonna do some great things for the giants and this is brett bielmo on Marcus Golden, he says, it's been awesome for me. I've been a fan of Marcus for a long time. Unfortunately, I had to play against him in college and then saw his career grow and got to know a little about him over the past few months. He's been awesome in the room. His voice, he got that personality. He's been a really nice addition to our room. And specifically on him being a great locker room personality and him being a little bit verbal and whatnot, not to say that this is a um, this is a bad or a good thing. This is just something that we didn't hear about Marcus Golden last year in terms of being a voice in the locker room. You know, even with the media last year, he was always just sort of a, a little bit of a quiet soul. Um, we never know what's truly going on behind the scenes, but we never had a coach talk about him like this. And that makes me think because I've been thinking about team captains and whatnot, would it be out of the question if Marcus Golden is a defensive captain this year? I wouldn't completely rule it out. Yet at the same time, I wouldn't completely rule it in either. Let me know what you think about that. Brett continues saying, um, this was, you know, talking about since Golden did not participate in the virtual, le uh, virtual offseason lessons, I think because nobody was allowed on the field in the spring, it wasn't really that far of a catch-up factor. Marcus Golden, really, the thing I appreciate about him, he just wants more and more and more and more. So I kept feeding it to him. I've been able to have some individual meetings as well, so he's been a real pleasure to be around. And this right here is what I like to hear, man. I mean, we know Golden can do the job. I mean, he did it last year. He had 10 sacks for us. Well, he did it in 2016, of course. In 2017, 2018, he's recovering from his ACL injury. We know he can do it. We know he has the physical ability. Hell, we even know he has pretty good technique to him as well. That's how he was able to get 10 sacks last year because he wasn't just using his power or his speed. Now he's this dude is training his mind so much and he's just learning. He's allowing Brett Bielma to teach him. It's something that, you know, as a veteran, you do that with this brand new teaching philosophy amongst the Giants. You do that and you're setting a good example as a leader to the rest of the young locker room. Because that's who has to buy into all of this, first of all. It has to be the veterans. If the veterans don't buy in, the rookies, the young guys, the second year, third year guys, they're not going to buy in either. So the fact that Golden is doing this kind of speaks back to what Brett said in the last quote in that he's a great presence in the locker room. 
And now we're learning that he's just a great football mind all around. In addition to that, I love that a lot. I love that a lot because there's always room for improvement. And Marcus Golden, he's not a top five edge rusher or anything. I don't think he could ever be that. But he certainly was the best edge rusher for the Giants last year. And if he could somehow improve from that, at least mentally, and you know, the direct connection there would be in his technical ability, that would be amazing. And that's something that I'm really, really glad to hear about. And the final quote I want to get in today is from the quarterback's coach, Jerry Shaplinski, on, of course, our boy Daniel Jones, starting quarterback of the New York Giants. This is Jerry kind of talking about Daniel's improvement in the offseason so far, more so on the physical part. And this is what he has to say. Um, and the question was if he was surprised about Daniel Jones or anything like that. I don't know if I'm really surprised by a lot. I have noticed his arms look strong to me. I did some work with him when he was coming out of the draft and I was at a different place and it looked good. It looks even stronger now. I don't know if that's a testament to his work in the offseason and what he's been doing. That's the one thing that jumped out to me, I guess. So listen, man. Coming out of the draft last year, one of the common knocks on Daniel Jones was that he had a weak arm. And I think as Giants fans, we all know that that's kind of false. He has a pretty average arm. It's not like the dude has a noodle there, and it's not like he couldn't get the ball down the field last year. He proved that, you know, a couple times with Slayton that when he needed to, he could really launch it down there. But it was never really considered a strong arm either way. It was very much an average arm. Out of the draft, though, a lot of people condemned it as a weak arm. So Jerry Shaplinski, which I'm not surprised to hear that he did some work on DJ last year in the draft because he was with the Dolphins last year. Um, the fact that he notices this improvement, now we all know, of course, he bulked up. I thought it was just to be at the, um, the point of contact, you know, to be stronger so that he wouldn't fumble, you know, or to be stronger so that he wouldn't really uh, get injured again. Now, considering that this helps out in fumbling, I would assume... Obviously, the dude increased his arm strength, which would help out in his passing game. Now, who knows how much stronger his arm is? Like, I don't really expect it to be too much. It's only 10 pounds of muscle that was definitely pretty much really distributed across the body. And you notice it a lot in his lower body. So I'm not sure just how much his arm strength increased. But this is something definitely that is pleasing to hear as well coming from Jerry Shaplinski. So that's the um, kind of the three guys I or, you know, in the three sets of quotes that I have for you all today. Let me know what you guys think once again. Um, the announcement from before stands with my semester starting up. I'm kind of going to be here and there with the channel not leaving, but it's going to be less content. I'll see you guys tonight for the Madden stream. That's it for now, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.